All right, Bears fans, the Chicago Bears have finally signed their defensive end. Of course, you've already heard the news. The Bears signed Yannick Ngakwe on Thursday night. He's going to yes. be their new defensive end. Iberflus has called him a four-down, three-down player. They signed him for a whopping $10.5 million, which I think all 10 of that is fully guaranteed. Um, the conversation that we wanted to have is not if the Ngakwe signing was needed or if it's good, but specifically I wanted to talk to you guys, or we wanted to talk to you guys about if or how much the signing makes the Chicago Bears better for this year, the 2023 season. Nick, before we get into it, how are you doing? I think that I, I think that with the videos that we've been doing, it's been more of like a, we just get into it. I, I like the personal side of things. So, Nick, how are things going? Uh, things are going great. Um, loving being on my own, finally. Um, life's going good, man. I'm working 45 hours a week. I'm getting shit done. And it feels great. I feel like an adult. That, that's good. That's good. Getting some time in. How's the girlfriend? Great. Doing great. Sounds like you guys are going to be going out later tonight, so that's that's always good to see. My girlfriend's yeah, at Lollapalooza good. right now. Feels bad. Nah, she's she's having a good time. It's not my thing, but she's she's having a good time. Um, right. Hopefully, you guys have gotten some Lollapalooza timing because it's a very special thing that the city has, and obviously, as Chicago Bears fans, it all goes hand in hand. I'm um, not crazy about it, but there, there was this really cool shot she had. Billie Eilish was there last night, so Thursday night, I didn't see that. and she had the camera on Billie, of course. And then you just moves to the right a little bit, and you just see the Chicago skyline. So, so cool. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Anyway, back to the matter at hand here. So, the conversation that I thought would be worthwhile here on the channel would be how much better does the Ngakwe signing make the Bears? Um, I've unfortunately seen a lot of people already comparing this to the Khalil Mack trade, and I, I wanted to put it to bed very quickly that this is nothing like it. Um, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer because they signed a player on a very team-friendly deal with low commitment on a very high position of need that the Bears did, and there's simply no arguing that it was a good signing. Um, right. I'm trying to dig up a tweet here because it may have been deleted, if I'm being honest. There's this one reporter for the Bears who's just absolutely getting ripped into, so to speak. His name is Mark Potash. And oh, man, he, I, said, I wanted to... That's the guy... Sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, but that's the guy no. who asked Justin Fields the stupidest fucking question ever at the, uh, the podium the other day after training camp on Wednesday, uh, asking about how the defense makes him better and why and how, again, the defense makes him better, and asked the question like three or four times almost. And Justin just kept kind of like not shutting it down, but answering it like a very respectful and very kind of like um, like he's been in the league for a while kind of way. Like he's like a seasoned veteran and answering at the podium now, it feels like now I think I think he's got a lot better with that. But that's I mean, it was just funny. I just saw everyone dragging him through the mud on uh, Wednesday after that happened. Yeah, dragging through the mud is an understatement. And I think it's deserved. Um, I hate to say that because these guys do this for a living, but um Mark's a fun guy, to say the least. So the quote that I wanted to read that he tweeted out earlier yesterday. No, yeah, late last night. He said, Conventional NFL wisdom says you don't let a good pass rusher go. Yet, the Bears will be Yannick Ngakwe's sixth team in the last four seasons. Still, a needed cap-efficient upgrade for the Bears. Ngakwe could be at the right place at the right time, joining a defense on the rise. And before, Nick, I let you get into that, I've got one more tweet that I would like to read off. Um, hopefully, it's still at the top of the mentions here. Um, it seems like I'm not going to have it. Essentially, there were um, a lot of... Actually, I think I just found it. It was from Colin, 7818. Um, he says, I'm sorry, but I think it's time to retire. I'm sure you were a great journalist at one point, but you obviously are completely out of touch with the league. It's leaving you behind, and like all great athletes, you need to realize it's time to hang them up. So <laughs> I think that it's a really good way to emphasize or I guess put on to display how passionate the Chicago base, Chicago fan base of sports, Bears right. included, are is in general. And I, I think there's always going to be a middle ground that you need to find with things like this. Um, Nick, I'm going to let you get into it here in a second. But as far as making the Bears better, it's a no-brainer. But the comments as far as, oh, he, it, it almost makes it seem like he's not a good signing. He is. But it, it's just really interesting to see kind of each spectrum here. And we're trying to find the, the, the correct middle ground. So, Nick, obviously, what are you thinking as far as the um, Yannick Ngakwe signing? I love it. I feel like it's been a match made in heaven ever since the offseason came uh, and started. Uh, I had seen some couple tweets from uh, some uh, good reporters. I shouldn't say good, credit, credible reporters 
uh, saying that they have actually been in talks for quite a while or quite some time after eventually, I think they were in talks, not, not long after off season started. Um, I think it was just more so of Ryan Pulse wanting him to have a one year deal and quick, easy money that he could get rid of now rather than giving him a long term deal, which is probably what is in Gakwe is looking for is a long term deal. Um, I love the signing through and through. I think it's a great pickup. I think we need somebody who is um, going to be on those NASCAR plays, those go, those goal plays on uh, just getting to the passer. I know that Eberflus did say at the press that he is going to try, or he isn't going to try, but he's going to be a third, uh, a three down uh, rusher which I don't know if that's something that's really a part of his game. He's not the best at run defense. He's really kind of just there to, to rush the passer. Um, and I don't know if it says anything about him that he has been on so many teams uh, as of recent uh, in, his, in his years. I think he was on the Jags for his first four years of his rookie contract, and then he got let go after that. Um, ended up bouncing around with the Vikings, the Ravens, the Raiders, the Colts. Uh, bounced around in 2020 from the Vikings to the Ravens. And actually since being drafted in the third round, he has, uh, has not had lower than eight sacks in a season. That's yeah, I just want to say the production remarkable. has followed him wherever he's gone. Right. So it, it doesn't matter what scheme he's in. It doesn't matter who's coaching him. He is there. He's going to make plays. And that's what I'm looking forward to with his defense. And he did play with the Colts, not under Matt Eberflus, but the scheme was like almost the exact same. So it should be a seamless fit, a seamless transition for Yangakwe to come into the team. Um, I think it's going to be great just to see somebody come in and be able to be a mentor as well. Uh, he's got a huge arsenal of pass rushing moves that he's used throughout his years. It's going to be nice to see him be able to mentor Dom Robb. Uh, Travis Gibson. I know he's not going to have to really mentor Demarcus Walker because Demarcus Walker is, uh, I wouldn't say a solidified player in the league, but he's uh, he put up a seven sack season last season. So um, it is also going to get interesting with uh, Ngakwe wearing 91 everywhere he goes and Dyrob not having 91. I was I know about to make a comment on this. Yeah. Yeah. I know he did say at the press that he'll do whatever it takes to get that 91. So Dyrob, make him pay up. Yeah, exactly. Definitely get your back out of that. Um, I was just getting out of the shower, and I watched the press conference with Eddie Jackson and Roshan Johnson, and someone asked Eddie, um, what's the most crazy deal or you know series of events that you've seen unfold for a player to get someone else's number? And he says, I don't think I really saw anything like that. Um, and I can't really remember this being an issue for the Bears either, but it will definitely be um, interesting to see. I don't, I don't see why... Um, Dominic Robinson wouldn't give up the number 91. I, I saw that there's some sort of like number log jam as well, where the only real available number on the Chicago Bears that isn't retired is 54. And we know that 54 isn't going to be assigned to anyone else either. So that's uh that's going to be a really, really interesting situation there. So again, at the topic at hand, how much better do the Bears get with signing Ngakwe? How many wins? Is there any wins? Uh, does it make them lose more games because they could have put spent the money elsewhere? W where do you think that this actually makes the? How much better do you think that this makes the Bears? I personally, I think it gives them at least an extra half win or a win at at, at least. Okay. I mean, you're you're looking at a solidified defensive pass rusher who comes in has had production everywhere he's gone. Like you said, has followed him everywhere he's gone. Um, and I mean, as a whole, if you look at it, nine and a half sacks last year compared to our defensive line all last year at six and a half. That says a lot. Um, yeah, he's going to keep us in games. He's going to keep, he's going to get the ball in Justin's hands. He's going to get the ball in Justin's hands in good field position, which is something that Justin hasn't seen in the past two years. He has never, never once gotten a feeling like that. I mean, we've had our, you know, fair share of those one-off interceptions or fumble recovery that just so happened, but, um, it's going to be nice to finally see the defense actually kind of hopefully rally around and step up and put him in great positions for him to win games rather than having him always fighting back and having to, you know, be down 20 to get him back in the game and have to rush for 140 yards in a game. Uh, like, like I said, I think it's going to give us at least a half win to a win, um, him alone, because um, he's going to be out there. He's going to be getting sacks. There's no reason why he shouldn't be. Um, and what's going to be awesome about him is with him being so productive and with the production following him everywhere, teams know that and they're going to plan against that and they're going to try to double team him probably, leaving somebody on the edge, uh, uh, on the other side of the edge to be open to get a free pass rush in, which I know that Travis Gibson last year was actually the most doubled uh, pass rusher in the league last year, which is actually kind of insane because he didn't have a lot of production at all, uh, even the year before. And I think that year before he had seven, just because of Khalil Mack and Robert Quinn being on the defensive line with him to help him. I out. had no idea. Did, you, did is that a re real stat that you pulled up on Travis Gibson? I'll pull it up right now. I believe he was double teamed sixty five percent. Mute your mic if possible for the keyboard. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I I did not know that, and I guess the idea of a double team coming with a four man pressure it it makes sense. But it's not something that I would think. Oh, it's Ngakwe. You got a double team. You got a scheme against him. He's a good player. But I would I would classify him in kind of that second wave of the free agents. So the first wave is kind of the um, 
you know, your gotta have them, your top dollar contracts, you get them done pretty much in the first few days of free agency. And then before the draft, there's that second wave, kind of, of the guys who wouldn't get their contracts otherwise until the first wave is sorted. And then the third wave is what we're seeing now with just everyone who's left and holding out and all this stuff. And I think Ngakwe is better than that. But the reason he held out is a couple things. He was looking for the right fit, the right team, and he was looking for the right, you know, check. So ultimately, I think that the Bears signed a very good player. As far as how much better does it make them, I think that Nick's uh, thought process here with, you know, half of a win to one full win better is very, very on point. I don't think, again, it's nothing like the Cleo Mack trade where it takes a good defense and makes it great. Nothing like that. Um, does it make them front runners for the NFC North? No, absolutely not. Does it make them Super Bowl contender? Absolutely not. But it is a very good player uh, upgrade, very good upgrade for the position at a team that needed the upgrade. So overall, I like that. Nick, how are you doing with those stats? You can unmute your mic if you're done. Okay, so on the I was off by four <laughs> spots. I was off by four spots. He was the fifth most... Um, Double team. Still, if, if you told me that Travis Gibson, top five. top five most double team defensive players in the NFL, I'd say you're full of shit. But Travis Gibson is a good player and had no production, unfortunately. So that is but, one of the indicators but as well. You can look back and see why. It's not because he wasn't yeah. productive, it's because there was nobody else on the line to yeah. garner yeah. That, that double mm -hmm. team. Mm -hmm. So that really, 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 really held him back. And I mean, I know that, like you said, he didn't come off, you know looking like the best pass rusher after the year he had with seven sacks because he did have Khalil Mack and Robert Quinn on the other side yeah. of him. But, I mean, that just goes to show how dominant he can be. If he's not double teamed, what's to say he doesn't win, you know, four or five, four or five more of those and get a sack and end up with, you know, six or seven sacks last year again. Yeah. So um, it's going to be great to see. Um, I know that a lot of people are talking about wanting to go out and get another pass rusher. I don't necessarily agree with that. I'm not I, – I love that they brought in Yingakwe. They had to. They had nobody else other than um, – uh, Demarcus Walker, and I know that Terrell Smith. I think that's his name. Uh, I don't know if that's the DB that they. Terrell Smith the is the DB. Who's the uh, the defensive end that we got? Uh, we got from Alabama undrafted. I can't remember. Terrell Lewis. Terrell Lewis is his name. Um, we have Terrell Lewis that's been coming into his own in the training camp as well. Um, I think Rasheem Green uh, is doing okay so far. Not a lot of noise coming from him or Dom Rob, but um, I have seen a lot of people talking about wanting to go out and get Justin Houston, wanting to go out and maybe not Carlos Dunlap or Melvin Ingram, because I know those guys are about the same age, but the production isn't there with like it is with Justin Houston. Um, I think for these guys to really develop and really follow Poles' plan and the way he kind of attacks the draft and attacks his teams, the way he builds his teams, is he doesn't go out and get those aging veterans to take snaps over the guys who really need them. Yeah. The, the, guy, the guys that he drafted need to get snaps against other teams. They're not going to get better. Uh, I mean, they're going to get better, but they're not going to get extremely better and develop the way that they should if they keep if they keep playing against the same people week in week out in training camp and on the practice squad. It's not yeah. going to work that way. I think I think it speaks volumes to. I know I've heard Ryan Pohl say this a lot, where kind of everything that you do, the last thing that you do is setting a precedence moving forward. So if right. he if he you know got scared, got cold feet, whatever you want to call it, and gave Ngakwe a big bag, you know. Other free agents in the future are going to say, sure, I'll come to Chicago if you pony up. But knowing that it's a fair team and if the production on the field overall as a team is, you know, where it's at, then maybe you're going to want to play for Chicago Bears. And if you ultimately, maybe Ngakwe has a 12 sack, 14 sack season, he helps the Bears go into a wild card game and they lose, whatever. But at that point, give Ngakwe a little bit more money, have him stay. That would be a great precedence. Sign a player. I mean Prove your shit. Now you're going to get your bag. That's that's a much better sign than just saying, you know, do whatever. Let's give you the money up front. I mean, and let's take a, a step back. He's only 28 years old. I don't yeah, think a lot exactly. of people realize that. A lot of yeah. people might think that he's a little bit older. He's only 28. And yeah. that, if he does a great year this year, who's to say Ryan Poles doesn't give him another two-year, you know, a two- yeah. or three-year extension? If yeah. he plays very well, if he plays well enough, I think that it's possible for Ryan Poles to do that and keep someone like him around. I mean, even the presser really seems like he loves to be here. I know he hasn't been here all that long, you know, in an entire day. But from what he feels and from, I mean, even waiting out, he could have signed with anyone. I mean, uh, no one yeah. knows what's going on behind the scenes with other teams. Yeah. He could have been in talks with three or four other teams. I know he was yeah. talking about wanting to go with a contender. And I mean, that even says a lot to even come to the Bears, that he wants to be with a contender. He sees that we're building something special. Mm -hmm. He sees what Ryan Poles is building. I feel so, like the contender was a little bit of a balk. Um, it's I'm sure. Possible. I'm sure it is. Honestly, I'm sure it is. I'm, I'm sure he just said that just to kind of get that out in the air and, you know, get that out in the open. But um, I mean, that still says a lot. He had to, he had to, Cream of the crop to pick from. 
He could have picked from anybody. A lot of people need in the league right now need some defensive edge. I heard 49ers fans saying that they wanted him. Yeah, so definitely yeah. that's that's definitely something that's very true here. He doesn't um, start on that team, though, I don't think. If we're being honest, I don't I don't know if he starts on that team. I doubt that. You so doubt that? I, I, I doubt that he starts. Oh, okay. I was going to say. Yeah, yeah, I just so I don't he comes, I think that's... Mm -hmm. yeah. He's going to come to Chicago. He will be the starter. He's going to be playing all three downs as per the head coach. And maybe he's just looking to use this as, the, as another stepping stone. Um, the one last thing that I want to quickly mention up, I don't want this video to get too long. Um, my initial thought that I kind of disliked the signing was, was kind of maybe a lack of ambition. So maybe if the Bears are doing really good and the Washington Commanders had... Montez Sweat doing really good, but overall as a team, they were not doing too good. Maybe there's a way you can get at Chase Young and ultimately upgrade the position even more. But I think the true vision here is having Gakwe come in, give him, have him give you the production that you're looking for. And then this offseason, specifically in the draft, you'll have two first round picks. Ideally, one of those is spent on Marvin Harrison Jr., but we know that's not happening. So use one of those two first round picks on a true edge rusher. I don't think yeah. it will be an outside linebacker because that's simply not the bear system. But go ahead and get the best defensive end in the draft. Get a Joey Bosa if he's available. Doubt it. But someone like that and really, truly upgrade the position moving forward on a nice team-friendly deal. Um, Nick, any closing thoughts regarding the Ngakwe signing? I know that the Bears signed Mercedes Lewis as well, but I'd like to keep that for maybe something separate. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's a great signing. I, I see nothing wrong with it. Um, and I also don't see the stopping him from going after anybody else that he wants to uh, right now in the uh, offseason or free agency. And even talking about, you know, if Montez Sweat with the Commanders is playing very well and, you know, they're looking to get rid of. Right now, I don't think the Commanders are really looking to get rid of Chase Young. Um, it's going to take a lot, I think, for them to want to have to get rid of him um, before letting him hit the free agency market, which which is what I think the Bears should do. If he plays well, if he proves it, let this be a prove-it year for him. And I'm sure he's going to want to weigh his options going into free agency if he ends up with having, you know, a, a 10, 12, 13 sack season this season. You know, if Chase Young comes out in the market, give him a bag. If he comes out and he looks great, I say give him a bag in free agency. I don't see why not. He's a young player. He's, he is coming off of an injury, but if he can somehow prove it, prove himself this year, uh, that's possible. And, I mean, it's the NFL. You never know when players become available, and they players that you never would think available are available come available. So, I mean, you could even yeah. see Nick Bosa coming available. Joey Bosa, uh, Max Crosby could be available, depending on how the Raiders look this year. Um, I mean, everything's up in the air right now, to be honest with you. Yeah, that is very true. You know, keep your, your options open. That's why, again, the Bears have a lot of free agency, uh, cap space, rather, for free agency next year. Um, I think that they should stick to the homegrown talent. Make sure you have one of your wide receivers locked up. Make sure that you've got um, your top cornerback locked up and yeah. go from there. Um, good video, Nick. Like I said, uh, we'll, we'll think about releasing another video definitely within the coming days. I don't know when this video will go live exactly, but we just wanted to make sure that we set the story straight. We know that the Ngakwe signing is good. It's not going to make the Bears a Super Bowl contender, but I don't think a lot of people think that way. Um, guys, if you enjoyed the video, as always, please leave a like down below. Feel free to subscribe if you're not already. And until always, bear down. Bear down, boys.